How you doing? I'm Adam McGinnis, hit songwriter and producer, and today I'll be doing a song breakdown of EXO's track, Jekyll. Now, most of you might know me as being one of the producers and co-writers of the song Next Level by Espa, and the reason why I started this channel was to create a place where people can understand the inner workings of how hit songs are created, also do demo critiques and showcase new up-and-coming artists, and make this a community where people can actually learn and grow their golden ear, which is what I like to call it, so you can actually not only hear music better, but hear life better. If you like what we're doing here on this channel, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, make sure your notifications are on, and so you can be always notified of our upcoming videos. We release at least one or two a week here on YouTube, and we also have more content on Patreon weekly. Also on Patreon, we do live recording sessions with hit songwriters and producers, so you can see how the tracks you're listening to are actually being created live in the room. That being said, let's get started with today's track, Jekyll by EXO. stop right there so I can start to break down the sections and tell you what I'm looking for whenever I'm trying to reverse engineer how someone created a track and most likely what was used to do it. So what I do is I kind of scan the song first. I don't listen to songs. I wait till they're selected in the poll in our Patreon. Then when they send them over to me, I pop on live with you and just kind of shoot these videos. So what my brain does, if I can kind of explain it so that way you can try it at home, is I'm actually doing a mental scan analyzing certain key moments. So the first thing is what happens within the first eight seconds to grab attention? It's very important to note, whenever you're making a song that you hope that the masses will listen to, and when I say masses, meaning millions and millions of people, one of the most important things is how are you going to make them pay attention? Okay, that word pay attention is very, very important. Now, the reason why paying attention is important is because you are paying with your lifetime. Time is the most expensive commodity that's on this planet. You can't refund it, you can't recycle it, you can't reuse it. So when someone says pay attention to this, you're actually giving someone a piece of a currency, which is what you have to offer, which is your life. So that sounds like a very big concept, but when you break these things down into small micro movements, you understand why it's important to grab attention in the beginning of a song so people can pay attention with their life, even if they're not paying you with money. So... Let me show you what happens, how they grab attention and what's going on, and then we'll talk about the transitional elements that are continuing each section to the next, because that's important to be able to hear. So let's start from the top again. Right off the bat, that grabs attention. That first note just grabs attention, and then it goes to a high note, which makes your ear split and go, what's going on? This is a very important trick. I use it all the time. When I want to make a low note, first pull someone in, and then I use a high note to make their ear follow it. Um, there's a lot of these little tricks that you can use in music, and you learn them over the years. And it's really just, like once again, to keep the attention of the listener. Let's keep listening and see what they keep doing. So notice when it when that bump when that note came back in again, it's not as abrasive as the first time we hear it in the intro. So I'm gonna play this again so you can see the difference. The first one is to grab your attention. The second time they play it, now they're already in, you're already paying attention, they take off the level of volume and abrasiveness. So watch that first note. Now 
notice how that second time you hear it, it's not as... Bram. That was done on purpose, okay? That first one was done with a little bit more volume, a little bit more grit, a little bit more extra sauce on it, just to grab your attention. I'm glad that hopefully everyone out there with the golden ears, you can hear how it first grabbed attention, and then it got a little bit softer, a little bit softer. And also, all these sounds are very unique. It's not like an average sound that you hear every day. That's another important part of paying attention and grabbing attention is creating things and sounds that are valuable to the listener because they've actually never heard them before. Now you hear the reverse sound coming in right here to build tension before we go into the verse. Okay, so if we're looking for what the anchors and the power of three, this is a very important thing that we're trying to decipher within this. Now, this is not a language that I speak, so the, kind of the good thing about me breaking these songs down is I'm looking for structural uh, architecture that happens to be within all hit songs. So a perfect example is, let's remove the lyrics because I don't know them. So let's look at this, the rhythm, and it goes da 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 da. Da, 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 da. So those are literally the same exact um, numbers of uh, syncopated notes. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to count powers of three. Powers of three is whenever you repeat something more than three times, or three or more times, and that's a way of embedding the melodic structure into a listener's subconscious brain. So watch this again. <laughs> So that na na ni da na na ba da na ni da na 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 one two three. So it's a power of three in even the notes. Sa na 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 one two three da na 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 one two three da na 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 one two three. So hopefully you're seeing these inner workings. So then when they go to the da na da da da, notice how they put on the harmony to grab more attention from the listener. You're gonna hear the lead vocal and it sounds like a hard harmony. Let's listen back. So I want you to listen for the high harmony here, which is going to go Watch. So they did again. So there's a lot of power threes happening here. On the da da da, one two three four, So even that's doing a power of three. Hopefully you're seeing the matrix a little bit more now. So a lot of this is just mathematics, um, but let's listen to what they start to add. Because right now we have the, the bass, we have a drum in here, we have the vocals but they're most likely going to start adding something soon. Ooh, listen to how they did that note. So on that one, we went... Listen to the low... They have like a low octave uh, vocal in there. At the same time, there's another sound in the background that we can listen for. So it goes boo and ah. Listen for the ah, which is like a reverse vocal. Listen for a little bit of a swell or a sweep. And listen for the poo all the same time. Do you hear that? Okay, so right here we have They're doing another power of three, but I want you to hear this random It's like a drum fill that goes from left to right. It's really clever. And 
and I love this little skip in the drum beat. It's like do 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 do. It's like bum 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 bum. And so when they do that harmony, listen to the low the, the low note they do. And they have a harmony on that note. Gato, 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 gato. Those are the three notes that I'm hearing. Okay. Let's try to hear them all if you can. I'll play it again for everyone. Okay, cool. So now they're just tagging these notes with uh, harmonies. Harmony. Harmony. So it creates these little anchors. But in the background, I want you to hear more of like a high ball they start to pluck around with the, in the production. So that little ball is creating a very interesting delay effect in the, in the headphones. Um, very cool to fill that space. The reason why they're filling that space is because they have to build more tension into the next section. So you don't want things to be linear. You want to make sure that they're growing constantly. And here's a perfect example of when they're doing it. See, look how it goes for the high sound, and all of a sudden, shah, and we build that tension I was talking about. It's coming, get ready. Maria, only no more. I'm sorry. She took and So, right now in this section, they're removing all the drums. And what that does is it makes the listener feel like they're not sure what's going to happen next. One of the best ways to build tension and release is to remove drums. Because when you remove drums, you remove the rhythm which means you don't really know where the timing is. So in that sense of not knowing, you, your brain also, also says to yourself, where are we? What's going to happen next? You have all these little thoughts happening, even though they're not very vocal in your mind, they're happening on a subconscious level. So in this, notice that they're using this bass synth to build tension. It has a beautiful growl to it. But then they hit an interesting chord in there, and I'm going to point to it, which definitely makes it musical in a unique way. So I want you to listen to that note right there where it goes dum. That note is the special note in this chord. That note? Whoever went to that note in that chord progression and everyone in the room went, yeah, let's do that. That's a perfect example of K-pop, of where technically it fits, technically it doesn't fit. It makes you think a little bit. It makes you feel something a little bit different. And you most likely wouldn't hear that in an American pop song. So it's those kind of scales and changes of things that really do amplify the experience, especially when I've listened to a lot of K-pop songs lately. Now, if we really were to break this down, they start to add the harmonies on the vocal. So listen for that. Um, they start to add the tip, 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 the drum roll. They add a sweep that goes. So all those things sort of build tension by using sonic information. It's important that you know the way tension is built is either by adding more sounds or removing sounds. That's the main two ways of doing it. So as you hear the additional tracks that they're putting in, you'll know it's because they're raising tension to go into the next section. Get ready, Maria, early in the morning, I'm sorry. Was not expecting that. Okay, listen to that part. Tons of energy there. Um, it definitely has more of like a like a gang vocal. Let's hear what else they do. 
Oh, and then that warning part is interesting. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Warning. Oh. Now, for everyone out there who has the golden ears, I want you to hear when it says warning and you hear the reverb that goes warning. And then he goes, oh. There's a lot of reverb filling up space here in this um, mid to lower range from some of these notes. And I want you to hear some of those things because they're important to kind of realize why, why there's space in this track because you can feel it actually breathing in the reverb. So listen for the reverb on warning and the O's. Warning. Oh. Break out. Ooh, that section was really interesting. Let me hear the harmonies that are happening. Out there. Okay, so it's interesting. On this section, there's a lead going, and the harmony's going, but when it comes back around the second time, there's another high harmony in the way back that most people can't hear. Uh, I'll try to show it to you. Okay, so the first one is just a two-part harmony. That's the lead. The harmony's going, but the second part has a high harmony going, it's way tucked in the back. It's put in the mix really well. If you can hear it, then I'm letting you know your golden ear is definitely expanding, but I'm letting you know that it's even hard for me to hear. So if you get, if you can hear this, pat yourself on the back. Break out. Oh my my. Okay, so once you hear it say breakout, you'll hear another reverse sound. And just to usher one section into the next again, and they're most likely going to go back to the verses now. Breakout. Oh my my. It's interesting. Listen to the vocal. There's a there's a reverse vocal going. Ah, uh, watch. Break out. Oh my my. So I want you to pay attention to the delay being used in the vocal. So when you hear the lead vocal come in, listen in the background to how the last word will still be heard, but it's bouncing around. So let's say if it goes, you know, so that's called delay. Um, you're going to hear delay and reverb is what makes it sound like it's almost kind of floating in space. So those two things are being used on the vocal production here in this lead vocal. But I want you to hear it now because it's put there for a reason. It's put there to create um, the filling of sonic space. So that way you don't need to put a bunch of instruments there because that vocal is still being carried through. Oh my my. I mean, this, there's nothing really for me to break down and all that. It just sounds really cool. Everything's really interesting. They're doing a lot of things that we've been talking about. Some power of threes. Uh, the production sounds tight. But I just want to point out his vocal right here. It just sounds really, really crisp and really, really clean. That, that little part of the attack of that vocal and just the, the performance of it just sounds like perfect. And then listen to that one too. So once again, building tension, building tension to go into that section with the low bass that comes back in. Oh, now they add claps. So they definitely didn't have claps in the first one. So once again, this is to build tension, build tension 
and they're just adding more sonic information to do this. I mean, this part is so interesting because it's so aggressive and it's so pretty. It's like, and then it's like, so I, I'm assuming, I don't know what they're saying, but I'm assuming the whole Jekyll thing is it's that back and forth um, of, uh, you know, Jekyll and Hyde or like those two faces. Uh, so to me, it's really interesting because I can hear it in the vocal and in the expression of the track. It goes from being like really groovy and almost like smooth R&B-ish hip hop. Then it goes like aggressive. Then it goes to kind of pretty. And all those flavors are being introduced at the same time back and forth, which makes it very interesting to listen to. So let's see what they do in the bridge now. <laughs> Those melodies are, are awesome. Uh, let me play them one more time. That, that melody is crazy good. That is awesome. That is awesome. This is one of my favorite parts of the track. A lot of you have seen, if you watch any of my other uh, breakdown videos, a lot of times in K-pop songs, they save the big vocal for the very last chorus, uh, and then they usually start doing ad-libs. So that's kind of like the formula that's been used a lot. So it's interesting here when they build up the track, you'll hear the kick drum just come in and it'll go boom, boom, starting to build tension. Then it goes boom, 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 and it hits the same loud vocal as the tension builds. And it's really to pull all of it together so that way we have this one more heroic piece at the end before the last chorus. So I just wanted you to hear how it slowly starts to pull you in with the kick drum and then it builds and builds and builds as the same time as the vocal. Hopefully you hear the ad-libs now. You hear all the louder vocals coming through in the last chorus. All right, so I'll give my expert opinion on the song Jekyll from EXO. Uh, this is an interesting song. The production is really cool. The, the vocals have a lot of interesting contrast in and out. The thing that makes the song different from a lot of the other ones is that there isn't a universal title repeated enough times for an average listener who doesn't know what they're saying throughout the song to basically jump in and sing along with. So the one thing I would say about the song is that it has a nice uh, groove to it. It has a nice roller coaster effect where we go up and down through different forms of sonics. We go from the hip hop R&B section to like this gritty bass to this like chant gang vocal to a pretty bridge. It's a lot of different movements that are really nice to hear. But without that vocal part or that uh, lyrical part that everyone can sing along with, it makes it hard as a listener, as someone like myself who doesn't know the language, to feel like I'm a part of singing along with this song. 
Um, so I don't know how well this song did or how well it didn't do because um, I'm just kind of getting these songs from you and uh, kind of putting them in our polls and listening to them. But I've noticed a lot of the songs that do really well in K-pop and EXO have universal lyrics that pretty much there's sections where everyone can sing along with and feel like they're a part of the stadium show that they usually do because I've seen some of the live performances and uh, they're pretty amazing. That being said, I hope you enjoyed today's song breakdown for EXO Song Jekyll. If you like what we're doing here on this channel, please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. Make sure your notifications on. Hit that like button. And in the comment sections, let me know what songs you want to hear. If you want to support this channel, just let you know that we do have a loyalty membership here on YouTube. And if you want to be part of our Golden Ear community, which is on Patreon, you can see more live sessions between hit songwriters and hit producers. Also, we upload more weekly content into the Patreon account, and you can choose the songs there by using a poll with the Golden Ear community, who are all growing the way they listen to music. That being said, my name is Adam McGinnis. Be good to yourself, be good to others, and I'll talk to you soon. Give me some of that.